Okay, so good morning everyone. Today we will continue our journal club presentation with uh, Dr. Alina. She will continue her topic from last week, which is about skull base related lesions at routine head CT from the emergency department. It's a very nice and interesting topic. I would recommend that you uh, listen carefully. She has some very important things to say. Good morning, everyone. We will continue our subject. We will continue our subject from last week about temporal bone. Temporal bone is the most injured bone in facial injuries. We must suspect it in every Chemosis, uh, loss of hearing, uh, uh, and uh, any raccoon eye, uh, any uh, vertigo. Uh, so uh, mostly uh, non-displaced fractures of temporal bone uh, can be easily missed. So if we we must look it uh, carefully to the CT. Uh, temporal bone, as any other bones, involved in most of the neoplastic processes, uh, infectious and inflammatory processes. Infiltrative processes from the petrous epicytes and otitis media. Uh, when we see any uh, mastoid effusion, we must look carefully, especially if it's unilateral, uh, if there is uh, any, uh, uh, any infection, any uh, mass, any uh, neoplastic uh, invasion uh, to, to that obstruct the obstructing tube. Uh, if we look uh, uh, here in left uh, uh, mastoid area, we see uh, uh, a lesion uh, that uh, cause opacification of mastoid air cells and uh, causing obstruction. Uh, you see the external enteric yes. canal occluded completely by something that's here, okay? And you see a complete opacification of the mastoid air cells and the middle ear cavity. You can see the ossicles here. Okay. Yes. Again, the same thing. You can see here opacified mastoid air cells. And here we see non displaced fracture. Yeah, non displaced longitudinal fracture of the temporal, petrous part of temporal bone extending yes. through the mastoid air cells and the inner ear. Right? Yes. In this figure, also the uh, mostly involved uh, in uh, is, uh, cholesterol granuloma. If we look uh, at this area, we see uh, a, a lesion that uh, in patient presented with tinnitus and left facial pain. Uh, we see well originated in left petrous uh, apex. Uh, normally, uh, it's pneumatized. We see here loss of pneumatization of petrous uh, bone uh, and. Uh, Shows uh, high signal intensity. And, uh, uh, next why, slide. Why high signal intensity? Because uh, it's fat. It's fat. Uh, post contrast image, we see it's not uh, enhancing. No enhancement, we see. Good. Cholesterol granuloma shows no enhancement. We see sedimentation level, the line between uh, yes. the arrow shows sedimentation level. Sed sedimentation. Sedimentation level. Okay. We come to posterior cranial fossa. Posterior cranial fossa also involved in, uh, we see um, uh, many lesions involved posterior cranial fossa in the uh, 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 X-ray department. Uh, mostly uh, it's uh, missed because of the artifact, beam hardening artifact that we see. So we must evaluate carefully. Uh, mostly involved lesions in posterior cranial fossa is the CP angle tumors, mm -hmm. uh, like vestibular schwannoma, uh, the mostly uh, involved tumor, uh, about 85 percent, followed by meningioma. Good. This one is what? <coughs> meningioma. This is a meningioma. This is schwannoma. Why this is schwannoma? This is meningioma. It's uh, dural. This is an X-ray lesion, dural yes. based lesion, yes. and you can see the homogeneous post-contrast enhancement and the mass effect on the adjacent cerebellum and brainstem and you can see it's related to the venous sinus yes. here. 
So it's a typical meningioma. And why is this uh, uh, schwannoma or vestibular uh, schwannoma? It's uh, nothing, uh, not a dural base. Uh, it is. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's uh, uh, what, What's the, the trick here? Neural. It's extending into the internal acoustic yes. meatus and cause mm. widening of the widening internal of the acoustic meatus, yes. which is very suggestive. Suggestive for, for Schwannoma. Good. Now. Uh, Posterior lymphocytes also involved uh, at uh, bony lesions where there is a tyrovenous malformation, causing uh, pulse, this pulsatile effect on the bone, causes uh, bone uh, erosions. Uh, that's what Yanish yeah, uh, looked in here. This image we show with this, uh, we see this erosion in the posterior fossa bones by uh, angiogram. We see that uh, it's aneurysm in the middle meningeal artery that extends to posterior. Enlargement, tortuous enlargement. Fistula. The artery is connected with the vein, causing congested veins, and the vein is causing this indentation on the bone, bone. causing the bone to be uh, eroded or uh, mottled or whatever you yes, call it. Okay. And here is the site of the fistula. Come on. Yes. And unison will cause single focal indentation. Yes. We come to another subject, it's a craniocervical junction. When the uh, craniocervical junction is uh, associated with any dislocation, uh, any fracture, any ligamentous injury, any uh, destruction, uh, so uh, involved in uh, hyperextension or lateral flexion in any traumas. So we have many types. Uh, first is occipital condylar fracture. We have three types, either in, uh, compact fracture, or extending to the condyles or associated with ligamentous avulsion. Either impaction fracture? Yes. And you are type one? Type one, this oh. impaction, this uh. impaction fracture. Okay. The second type involved extend to occipital condyle. Which is type two. Type two. This, this here. Uh, third type associated with ligamentous disruption. The ligament is disrupted. Disrupt. Yes. And it's called type three. Which is hmm. non stable. So type one and two are stable. They are stable. No type problem. three are non stable. So it's important to differentiate whether it's type one, type two, or three, because this will need surgery. This yes. will, will not. Uh, another fracture. Uh, next slide. Another fracture is atlas fracture. Uh, atlas fracture associated mostly with C two fracture uh, altogether. Yani yeah, occur. Uh, have five types. First is posterior uh, arch fracture, and the second is anterior arch. Uh, third is associated with each other, anterior and posterior, which is Jefferson burst fracture. Uh, fourth one is lateral mass, or well, fifth is avulsion injury. <coughs> uh, we, uh, mostly coronal image show displacement of lateral mass of C1 in relation to C2. Mm -hmm. So we must look to the space between uh, the odontoid process and the anterior arch of C1. And lateral mass. And lateral mass. Lateral and lateral uh, mass is the anterior arch. Yes. Uh, odontoid fracture is another fracture, mostly have three types. Uh, first, uh, a tip of the uh, odontoid process. Uh, a second, uh, it's a junction when the tip with junction with the body. A third one, extension in inside the body. So. It's important not to mistake an infused odontoidum or the subdental basilar synchondrosis with dense fracture. Which we see a lot right now. Yes. Uh, the most common in, uh, uh, cranial cervical junction also involved in uh, neoplastic processes such as uh, ependymoma, it's the most common one, uh, which uh, expand into spinal cord, uh, shows a slightly high, or hyper attenuated non-enhanced non uh, CT image. Extramedullary intradular lesions have a CSF cleft. So and how is intramedullary most likely it's an ependymoma? Yes. On non-enhanced CT images, it's it iso appears to hyper. Hi iso or hyper yes. on CT images. While if it's extra medullary, okay, which we see a CSF cleft, yes, it's, it's mostly what? Extra medullary, intra. If it's extra meningioma, it's either meningioma or, or uh, nerve sheath tumor. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Osteos metastasis also can see here either osteoplastic or uh, mixed or osteoblastic. Uh, most involves from bladder, multiple myeloma, breast, lung, or prostatic cancer, especially if the patient is over 40 years of age. Uh, this image we show uh, a German formation of young man have recurrent headache. In uh, an image we see crowding of foramen magnum. Uh, while coronal image we see that the cerebellar tonsil uh, herniated inside the foramen magnum. Okay. This is the foramen magnum. Peak like and you see the cerebellar tonsil below the level of the line of the foramen McRae magnum. Line. McRae line. It How many? Millimeters normal? Three. Uh, three. It's up to well, three millimeters last normal. Millim, Joel, okay. While here, it's more, definitely more than three, maybe yes. six or seven yeah. millimeter. So this is a clear malformation. Will result decrease the CSA in foramen magnum, which cause mild hydrocephalus. Sure. Other path entities are extracranial uh, spaces that must be evaluated in the CT. First space is the masticator space. Masticate, contents of masticator space are mandibles, TMG joint, muscles of mastication, and the third branch of the trigeminal nerve. Traumatic abnormalities include ma mandibular fracture and dislocation of the TMG joint. Arthritis also can be involved in TMG joint. We see erosion uh, and uh, osteophytes, which uh, sharpen pencil-like appearance, appearance of mandibular condyle. In which case do you see the sharpened pencil? Arthritis. In the rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid. Okay. Rheumatoid arthritis give you this sharp red pencil appearance. That's advanced, no matter. No, advanced. Okay. But uh, in degenerative, in the osteoarthritis, so in the osteophytes with flattening the mm. condylar head, more have a sharp red pencil. Okay. Yeah. My friend, second, what's the B3 branch of Mandy the trigeminal? Branch. Good. Remember. What's about the B1 and B2? Ophthalmic branch and mouth. Uh, this is the spaces and its extension. Another, uh, the slide after that, we see the spaces good. This the green one is the masticator space. Good. The green one. So here, the everything here we call it in the masticator space. Yes. We are talking about this part. Mm -hmm. We are talking now about this part. <coughs> this also, I mean, spaces, we come to it around like that. And the space is also involved in infection. <coughs> Uh, inflammatory process that mostly come from teeth uh, and the uh, abscess formation uh, which caused uh, uh, jaw pain and uh, trismus. Uh, the loss of normal fat glands is an important sign. Uh, we see a collection if there's abscess. Uh, the most common in, uh, uh, neoplasm also involved in this space uh, are uh, trigeminal uh, nerve. Most involve the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve which causes perineural spread or primary nerve tumor, uh, or, uh, either from oropharyngeal or from intracranial malignancy extent. Uh, the important sign is the widening of mandibular foramen is the most important sign. In, of what? Sign for involvement of neoplasm. For neoplasm? Involvement of mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve. Okay. And which foramen the mandibular branch exit the skull? Trigeminal nerve intracranial, so? Yes. And it divides into three branches. Yes. The mandibular branch exit. Superior good. orbital fissure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ovary. Yeah, ovary. Yeah, We have also carotid space. If we return to the image of the spaces, we show them uh, the carotid space. So. The red one is the carotid space. This one? Yes. Is the we, we are talking about this uh, space, carotid space. The contents of the carotid space uh, are uh, uh, the, uh, the carotid artery, the jugular vein, sympathetic plexus, nerve uh, roots, and the uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, cranial nerves. Uh, the uh, carotid space formed from all the layers of the uh, cervical fascia, superficial, middle, and deep. Uh, the carotid space involved in traumatic abnormalities such as carotid dissection <coughs> and sedu aneurysms. The most case, case, cases presented stroke-like symptoms. On an enhanced CT, 
carrot dissection is seen as long segment luminal irregularity or abrupt change in caliber. Displacement of calcified plaque in atherosclerosis as arterial wall of a can be seen. Acute dissection, there will be hyperattenuating hematoma in the wall. Pseudoaneurysm is uh, seen as a focal dilation of the vessel, usually just proximal to the entrance of the carotid canal. Carotid canal, where is it located? In which part of it? Carotid canal, what is your carotid canal? Internal carotid artery. Good. When? When you are? Around the valley. Yeah. Carotid canal in the middle cranial fossa. Hey. Contain the internal carotid artery. Which one? Carotid canal. Yes. 
the third album selling, which one? Usually, usually of course, Barrex, still there. Confection, Luxus, Confection, Luxus, Confection. It's very small, so I actually made again, mm. and you get this thing. So be careful when you eat fish. Malignancy mm. also can be involved as mesopharyngeal carcinoma, non Hodgkin lymphoma, and minor salivary gland tumors. Uh, if there is asymmetry between mesopharyngeal and mesopharyngeal space uh, in uh, the <coughs> CT, we see as mass like invasion of adjacent structures. Uh, in the central cranial skull base destruction, uh, they will clue the radiologist into nasopharyngeal carcinoma diagnosis. So, any unilateral opacification of muscular air cells, mu you must look for the yes. nasopharyngeal cavity because it's a very high li list of diagnosis, especially in older age group and smokers. If we look to this image, we see asymmetry <laughs> between. Uh, uh, both nasopharyngeal spaces. And you can see the mass here. Yes. Again, this is, what's, what's this image? Post contrast. Post contrast CT scan? Yeah, yeah. MRI. 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 You want post contrast <coughs> showing the mass here. Yes. You can see here the Ostachian tube, while yes, here it's this is the fossa across the middle is occluded. We have also cyanonasal regions that must be evaluated uh, in if there is traumatic abnormalities such as facial fracture, lifford fractures, nasiro, or pitoisoidal fractures, uh, and inflammatory or infectious process also, also can be included, like sinusitis, granulomatous uh, polyangitis, uh, or sarcoidosis. Sinusitis is a clinical diagnosis, but uh, imaging feature can include mucosa thickening, uh, frothy secretions and air fluid levels. Hyperattenuating, any hyperattenuating expansile materi uh, ma uh, ma material that see uh, in case of allergic fungal sinusitis occur in asthmatic patients mm -hmm. mostly. Uh, that uh, uh, and the ominous invasive uh, extra sinus soft tissue in case of invasive fungal sinusitis. Uh, is, uh, there is granulomatous uh, polyangitis manifest uh, as chronic rhinitis, renal failure. Uh, you want to say Wigner's granulomatous? Yes, Wigner's granulomatous. You want to say Wigner's granulomatous. You have pulmonary and cyanonasal granulomas. Yes. With shimu, renal involvement. Uh, renal failure. Mm. Uh, Imaging include mucosal nodularity of the nasal cavity, septal destruction, erosion, osteoneogenesis. Sargoidus may show similar non specific finding on an enhanced CT. Shafin report fracture shown in Hostachian, shown in other report shown so. Only fracture. Okay, shown by other classification, report no. type 1, type 2, type 3. Yeah. Lefort, this is a research. Okay. Jab skulls, can fit meat skull. And box hadi, and can add blood from one to one to Okay, at different strengths. And we show. كل بوكس شنو الفراكشر اللي سوا؟ ريسيرش ريسيرش بعد فشاف انه اذا بالفورس الفلاني بالمكان الفلاني راح يصير فراكشر بهالمكان سموها ريبورت 1 اذا زين ستراي في سير فراكشر بهالمكان سوا ريبورت 2 وهكذا ولا هو يعني يعني على ريسيرش سموها مو ريسيرش حلوه والله مو؟ سايلو نازل كافيتي مالكنسيس اوسو انفوينس اوستيوما سكوام السل كارسينوما ليمفوما and differentiated carcinoma and uh, istio neo infiso infiso neoblastoma uh, squamous cell carcinoma is the most common malignant tumors and effect uh, manifest as mass like destructive soft tissue lesion infiso neuroblastoma is a neurotodoma neoplasm located in nasal cavity olfactory recess may uh, may be isolated to the nasal cavity its finding include olfactory recess widening and cribriform plate extension. Let's go. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Which help to differentiate from other malignancies. Sure. Uh, another entry is the juvenile uh, angiofibromas that any young boy involved with ecstasis must be suspected. Uh, in, uh, it's the key word now, boy. Boy. 
plate fracture uh, image should dislocated right uh, TM joint uh, right mandibular condyle in patient with found the unconscious there is uh, the no, uh, in comparison to the left side it's normal see this one mandibular condyle compared to this one mm -hmm. other right mandibular condyle it's completely dislocated anteriorly Thank you. Okay, tell you I have your orbit as other uh, uh, spaces involved, most in traumatic entities, multi torn body involved, uh, globe rupture, uh, lens dislocation, and hemorrhage or retinal detachment, uh, hematoma, or all fracture of orbital floor. Infection mostly uh, occur in. Uh, uh, it's uh, seen clinically, but uh, identification of post-septal extension and uh, subperiosteal abscess is extremely important. <coughs> Acute manifestation may occur in thyroid or uh, orbit fatty, can be big per orbital cellulites <coughs> in thyroid. Orbital pseudo tumor can mimic tumor. Uh, neoplastic processes such as primary neoplasm as choroidal melanoma, optic nerve meningioma, lacrimal lymphoma, lacrimal gland lymphoma, and adenocystic carcinoma. Intraorbital metastasis can occur in basal cell or squamous cell, skin cancer, breast, or renal carcinomas. Uh, other space is parotid space. The parotid space will contain uh, of its lymph node, parotid gland, retromandibular vein, and the cranial nerve. Uh, Which one? Which one? Which cranial nerve? Seven facial nerve. Oh, we'll check that. <laughs> facial nerve. Parotid gland inflammation is common. We see it uh, daily uh, as area of abnormal attenuation uh, and indistinct border. Uh, the fat plants will disrupt it. There's possible thickening of uh, deep cervical fascia. Mostly it's acute bacterial uh, salivinites, uh, unilateral. Uh, uh, which uh, result in silences or stone blocking the duct, gland duct will appear as dilated, the gland uh, will duct will appear dilated in CT image. Mm -hmm. Parotid gland abscess can be seen as hypoattenuated flu collection within the gland. Non-infectious parotitis can occur secondary to sarcoidosis. Mm -hmm. uh, or radiation therapies, children diseases, <coughs> or chronic uh, conditions as gland appear atrophied or replaced by fat. Parotid gland neoplasm mostly in, involved with pleomorphic adenoma, the most common salivary gland tumors, or lymphomatous papillaries adenoma, and Wartian tumor. Uh, as appear a well-defined heterogeneous solid or cystic lesion, can be multifocal or bilateral. 
Malignant neoplasms include mucoepidermoid carcinoma and adenocystic carcinoma, which affect intraparotid facial nerve, cause perineural spread. Purely cystic lesions in the carotid gland occur as brachial cleft cyst, <coughs> simple cellular cyst, benign lymphoepithelial lesion, common in patients with HIV infection, in association with cervical nerve adenopathy or adenoid tissue in the eye. Have the facial nerve exit the skull through which foramen? Styro muscle. If comparison in, uh, in this image, if we compare parotid glands, we see a mass in patient presented with seizure. Uh, yes. We saw in, uh, in the incidental finding, a small world find uh, mass in the left parotid, later diagnosed as benign Hodgkin tumor. In conclusion, we must look to around the skull base easily uh, to not miss any uh, lesion in the skull or any fracture, we must to extract uh, cranial spaces, uh, any extension of uh, infection, fracture, hematoma, or uh, neoplasm. Uh, in order, uh, we put a, a list in our mind in order to not miss any lesions. Thank you very much. You. Good, excellent. Uh, comprehensive review of the pathologies of skull, especially in the emergency department.